Hey there, how's it going? Can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. How's it going, Fred? Pretty good, pretty good. I apologize in advance. It's telling me my signal is weak. So I'm trying to see if I can log in and get my, um, well, actually, let me just connect my phone and my, my Zoom here. So hopefully I can free up some bandwidth. Sure. All right, is that any better? Yep, loud and clear, no problems. Okay, great. Welcome, Matt. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Doing well, thanks. Hi, Teresa, how are you? Hi, I'm good, how are you? Good, doing well, thank you for joining. And who do we have from uh, the district office? Is that Khalid? Hey, good evening, Christian. Yes, this is Khalid. Hey, nice to nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Yes, nice to see you as well. It's hard to believe we've been virtual so long. There's a lot of people we haven't. I still haven't met physically yet. Yeah, it's we've been on the board for a while, but you know, I haven't met them physically yet. Yeah. One. Well, I'm sorry, Christian, did you freeze? Yeah, Chris, you froze for okay. a second there. I'm frozen. Can you hear me now? We, we can now. You're, you're you. back, uh, but you dropped right as you started to speak. Oh, OK. I was just saying one day, one day we'll be back in person all together again. There we go. Just give it a few more minutes. Three minutes. Pat and Martina, since this is the first time we're meeting, if you'd like to put on your camera, you're more than welcome. Uh, if you're not, camera. Uh, 
I would, but there's um, so much commotion going on in the background in my home that I just thought it would be too distracting, unfortunately. No Is problem. that okay if I, if I don't show my face tonight? Sure. Yeah, sure, of course. We're, we're happy to have you. Thank you for joining in, in any way that you can. Thank you. And we had someone just join via iPhone. Who is that? Who do we have with us? I don't think it's Pat Moses, because that name shows up. It's, someone just joined about a minute ago on an iPhone and they're muted right now. Okay, maybe when we go around the room, um, maybe I have connection issues, but. Right. Well, you know what it is? Uh, just also as a, as, a, as a housekeeping. So if you're on the phone, um, star six will mute and unmute you. So if, you know, you know, if you're on the phone, so it's like, if you want to mute and unmute yourself, you can you just hit star six. That'll allow you to speak. Thank you, Fred. So how many Zoom calls I'm at, I actually know that by now. <laughs> Although typically you have to ask Khalid to remind me which one it is. All right, and I see we have Jim Smith just joined. Jim, welcome. Who are we missing, Fred? I, from what I can tell from the list that went out, it looks like Vivia, Mary, Zach, and Patrick, or Patrick. Does that check with what you have? Oh, no, yeah, maybe Patrick. Uh, I do not have the list. Uh, Ms. Rollison Blackett, uh, you may need to excuse her. She, she's going, she's at the medical thing she's dealing with, so you may need to excuse her for this meeting. Okay. Uh, no. But I believe you are correct about uh, Ms. Morgan. Um, Khalid, do you have the, the attendance list? Could you say, could you verify who else is supposed to be on? I'm actually also trying to access that. I'm having a difficult time accessing my emails for some reason. So I'm <clears throat> give me at least give me a couple of seconds so I can see how I can access that from here. Other than that, sure. you asked maybe about the Patrick Donovan. So Christian, uh -huh. did you ask about a Patrick Donovan? Because that individual claims that they never, <clears throat> excuse me, they never filled out an application form. So it was very strange because, because they did fill one out um, and we had the results, but they're saying that it wasn't them. So uh, I didn't mean to bring that to your attention. And that was actually today that that occurred. Um, so this person, I guess, is not a part of the committee. They say that they do not live in this area. So that was a bit of an aberration. In terms of the other members, uh, we did send out a reminder notice email this morning. Uh, and, and we also sent out the calendar invite last week, Friday. Uh, I, you know, we can follow up with the board members at a, you know, definitely tomorrow to see um, you know, if there's anything that we need to be aware of or such. Okay, sounds good. Well, thanks for the heads up about Patrick. I just made a note of it. We can uh remove him moving forward but that's that's helpful to know thank you Kelly. yeah i saw you just joined thank you for joining i think we have a fair amount then uh we certainly have more than 50 percent of the folks that receive the email so uh Fred, what do you think? Is it, could we get started? I think so. I think so. Definitely get started. We'll try and be respectful of everybody's time. 
You can get through your agenda. Mr. Chair, the floor is yours. Okay, great, thank you. Well, uh, thanks everyone. Thank you so much for joining this uh, first meeting after the summer break for the Environmental Protection Committee. And thank you so, so much for your interest in joining the committee so that we can help uplift our community uh, from Empire Boulevard, Eastern Parkway on down to, to Clarkson. Um, for those that joined a little bit late, if you'd like to put on your camera, you're more than welcome, uh, particularly as we introduce ourselves. But if you feel more comfortable without your camera, that's totally fine as well. Uh, just to go through the agenda, I do, as Fred said, want to be respectful of everyone's time. So my goal is to get us out of here in less than one hour and a half. Uh, and so the agenda, which Khalid circulated earlier, includes a meet and greet, uh, thinking through our vision for this committee, uh, coming up with some shared meeting norms in terms of how we want to engage in our meetings, uh, to the extent possible, brainstorming on some programming. Uh, for now, 2022, another summer break, and then uh, discussing some roles for folks, and then any other business. So. Let me just stop. I got a little message that said my internet connection is unstable. Did everyone hear me well? I think the message got through, even though you uh, were, um, you know, you were locking up here and there. Okay. Um, I may try and move during the meeting to a place where there's better reception. In fact, give me one second. Let me let me try and make an adjustment here. I'm sorry. And Fred, if there's anything you'd like to add, uh, feel free. Uh, sure, I guess, uh, let me see, my, my, my song and dance for a quick few seconds while the chair uh, gets, gets resituated. Uh, for all those, if I don't, haven't met you personally, my name is Fred Baptiste. Uh, I'm currently the chair of Community Board 9. Uh, so I just wanted to join this evening mainly to welcome you to the Environmental Protection Committee uh, for the 2021 20, 22 year. And I wanted to thank you. Um, this is all volunteer. Uh, and you're doing this. I know everyone is busy in, in your other lives, you know, with your work responsibilities, wherever the community, um, you know, activities you're engaged in, families. Um, so, so really, it speaks to who you are as people and how much you care for our district um, that you volunteered for this. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, I, I think the board is, we've just kicked off this year. Uh, this is the first meeting of the Environmental Protection Committee. Uh, we have a, a new member of the board who stepped up to take the chair of this committee. Uh, very excited. Um, he, he's, he's absolutely fantastic, qualified, um, and he just has the leadership ability that I know is going to take this committee to the next level as well. Um, and, you know, so I just really look forward to working with all of you. I just wanted to say that uh, you definitely have the full support of the board. If there's anything we can do in terms of helping your experience as you're going through, if you have questions, if there are technical issues that you have, uh, I myself, uh, Khalid Nixon is here as well from the district office, uh, phenomenal uh, member of the, of the team. Uh, we are here to assist in any ways possible. Um, but this is your committee. So I, I leave you two to do your work. And again, uh, whatever we can do to support, uh, we're there. Thanks again and welcome. Thank you, Fred, that was great. And I, I really wanna echo what you said about <clears throat> my appreciation as well. I share what Fred said in terms of appreciation for your time and energy and efforts towards the committee. We know this is a volunteer thing, uh, but I think we are stronger as a community and we are stronger together when we put our heads together and come up with a collective plan that can make sure our community is environmentally protected and, uh, and thinking for the long term at the same time. So with that being said, for the meet and greet portion of this meeting, I would just like to have folks go around the room and say your first name, uh, where, your cross streets that you live and one fun fact. And there's no particular order, so feel free to jump in. Uh, I'll go ahead and start. I'll say, my name is Chris, Chris Lubo. I live on Clarkson, so I'm at the Southern uh, reaches of CB9. I'm on the north side of Clarkson between Flatbush and Bedford. And one fun fact about me is that uh, I think I have tried 
every red velvet cake between Empire Boulevard and and Clarkson. And I am happy to report that Errol's Bakery, in my humble opinion, is the best spot for a red velvet cake. I'll go next. I'm, I'm Matt. I live on Rutland near Flatbush. And I hate mosquitoes and litter. I also do not like litter. And I'm glad that you're on this team and on this committee. Thank you, Matt. Happy to be selected. Hi, I'm Teresa. I live on Sullivan Place um, between Bedford and Rogers. Uh, I'm here because I have environmental concerns. I guess fun fact would be that uh, I have this dog, her name's Rue, and uh, every time I get in a meeting, she acts wild and will be behind me scratching the door doing stuff. So. <laughs> That's, that's so much fun. Well, welcome to you, Teresa. All right, somebody else can go. Is, is that everything? That's great. Welcome to you and Taru. Thank you. I'll go next. Um, Pat Moses, I've been on the board for about five and a half years. And I'm the former chair of the ULOP committee for two years. And I'm a Winthrop between Bedford and Flatbush. Great. Thank you, Pat. And thank you for your continued service to CB9. Happy to have you. OK, I'll go next, well, un unless you would like the other folks to go. No, please go ahead. I'm Maxine, Maxine Barnes. I am a member of MTOP. Congratulations to MTOP. I say that um, with pride. Um, I am also president uh, emeritus of 200 Sterling Street Block Association, which is Sterling Street between uh, Rogers and Nostrand. A fun fact is that let's have some fun cleaning up Nostrand Avenue and reminding the commercial vendors to clean the 18 inch rule and to clean up the gutters and sewers, also Empire Boulevard. That should be fun. Look forward to uh, working with you and seeing what you, exactly your visions are for the 2021 fiscal year in. That's it. Thanks so much, Ms. Barnes. We really, we really appreciate your your efforts and uh, I think you have some good ideas already looking forward to hearing more about that when we talk about our vision. Thank you. All right, I guess I can contribute. Uh, once again, my name is Fred Baptiste. Uh, Wait a minute, there's some the more, excuse me, there's other people in here not saying anything. Isn't this hello yeah. everybody? Yeah, I was going to, you know, give them a, well, give them a, a chance, chance to... Brad, give them a chance, give them a chance. Yeah, Martina, Jim Smith. He Who said that there, there was no order. There was no specific order. There's no order. Th thank you. We do want to hear from everyone, but please go ahead, Fred. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so been on the board uh, since 2012, so about nine years now. Uh, fun fact, I don't know how fun it is. Uh, uh, I was a member of the Marine Corps, which I loved, which I loved. All right. Thank you for your service. I did not know that. Thank you, Fred. And, and all my kids say I smile so much to be a Marine, but yeah. <laughs> I got a couple of friends who are former Marine. I'll just say they don't smile as much as you. I don't know what, where they were sent as, as Marine Corps members, but welcome your smile and, and your leadership. Thank you. And you said it correctly. It's a former Marine. No such thing as an ex-Marine. Said it correctly. There you go. All right, we got a few more. Martina, go ahead.
Martina, would you like to share? Okay, Jim, if you're on the line, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Jim, if you're on I the remember line. Huh? I'm sorry. No, I was saying, I remember Martina said she had a lot going on in the back, so she might just be a little bit busy. Mm -hmm. um, if Jim doesn't come on, maybe you just give him a few minutes. If they're able to jump on later on, you can always do the introductions if you want. For sure. Yeah. Well, well let's move forward then. Oh, Martina just entered what the What about way. Matthew? Matthew, I haven't heard from Matthew. Matthew Burton. I'll happily go again. Um, I, I'm on Rutland near Flatbush. And I, uh, let's see, what did I say? I hate mosquitoes and litter. Oh. Oh, there's Martina. Yes. Hi, Martina. Martina came back. Martina. I'm so sorry. My other computer totally crashed. And I couldn't even tell you guys that I was um, incapacitated there for a moment. So, um, hi, I'm Martina. Um, I am um, happy to be a part of this group. I am very concerned about our green spaces and um, not only keeping them, um, but also potentially and hopefully extending them um, because we live in a high density area and we're in the middle of COVID and maybe for a decade to come. So, you know, my hope and dream is to um, actually um, extend and um, increase our, our green spaces. Thank you. I live, I live on um, Sullivan Place uh, near Tara and uh, near Rogers. Great. Thank you so much, Martina. And thank you for your commitment to jumping back on, even though you had some computer issues. We're, we're really happy that you're here. I see that uh, Nicola, that Nicholas just joined. Uh, Nicholas, we are just introducing ourselves <clears throat> along with our Cross Street and one fun fact. I think he may have just dropped. Okay. Well, uh, Jim, if you're there, you're more than welcome to introduce us yourself whenever you, you're able to and when uh, Nicola comes back <clears throat> to do himself as well. I do want to just briefly note that a lot of us live either in South Crown Heights or Prospect Lefferts Gardens. And to the extent possible, I really would like our Environmental Protection Committee to focus uh, even more broadly than that and think about Wingate as well. So if you have neighbors, friends, family members that live in Wingate, that are interested in these issues, please invite them because I think having uh, re representation across the board and having everyone's voice in this, in this process will be important to make sure that it's inclusive and to make sure that we're really thinking holistically about our community. So no, no need to uh, you know, share names now, but if there's names that come up, feel free to shoot me an email afterwards. Uh, moving forward then, and that kind of segues right into the vision. So I have some thoughts for the committee, but I really want to hear from the committee members about uh, what we would like to see in terms of environmental protection in CB9. I'll just briefly say that I think this, we have a lot of uh, issues that are apparent to the eye and to the ear and things related to water, dirt, air, noise. That's very clear. And I think that those issues need to be addressed. And one thing I would like to do for our committee is set up a tracker of 311 uh, complaints, because I think that's the first step in terms of addressing these issues is entering, uh, calling 311 and getting that number that 311 gives you. And then I can follow up with the district managers to 
then follow up with the city agencies. But I want us as much as we can to think more broadly and more boldly than just the issues that are apparent to us every single day when we walk down the block. And I think Hurricane Ida really exposed some of the um, some of the issues that we face across the five boroughs uh, with 15 folks that ended up passing away, many of those who were living in submerged apartments. So unfortunately, you know, the studies are saying that we're gonna have more storms like this. And city council recently last week passed legislation uh, to ensure that the next mayor of New York City and all future mayors will come up with a climate change plan. So <clears throat> I think it'll be important for us to think long-term, think bro broadly and think boldly. Let's really be, um, I don't wanna say super, super high expectations to the point where we won't achieve it, but let's, let's be bold in our vision and think how can we make this community, the ideal community to live in, to work in, to send our children to school in, uh, not just for today, but for the future as well. So that's kind of my opening shtick. The most important thing though, in terms of our vision is hearing from all of you. So I would love to hear ideas in terms of, it could even be as simple as buzzwords. What are some words that come to your mind? And maybe let's start with that. What are some words that come to your mind when you think about environmental protection in CB9? Um, well, I don't really have any buzzwords, but I, I do notice that even though we're so close to the Botanic Garden mm -hmm. and our Prospect Park, that a lot of our CB9 is a lack of community gardens. We've, owned, we've got very, very few. We're not really, we don't have a lot of composting as other areas around the city do. Um, I, I didn't see CB9 put that out. Like there's a, the, there's a sign up for this neighborhood. If we get enough signups, we'll get composting. But I, I didn't see that on the on the weekly bulletin that goes out. Um, and as far as uh, like the like the green markets, we've got a real dearth and problem with the green markets. So for the environment, it would be nice to have some areas where we're growing food and sustaining ourselves with food that we grow and selling it, you know, Red, Red Hook, a few other places, they, they do have that. You know, working on programs and any development that comes into this area needs to have like green roofs, like everything needs to be not just like throwing up something that's gonna create problems like the project that MTOP stopped on Franklin Avenue. Like well, something's going to get built there, but we need to have a broad plan in what gets developed in our neighborhood and also teaching our, our children like environmentally safe careers. You know, I don't see anything like that happening at the, the new community center. Like just really thinking about an overall vision, food, food green, you know, we're in an area where we don't really need to worry about flooding. We're in an elevated area, but we do need to keep our gutters clean and we do need to worry about the, the sewage that's flooding into our water all around us from our neighborhood. Even though we're not getting flooded, we're producing waste. So I hope that wasn't too much for you guys. That's just what I'm thinking. That's my buzzwords. I love everything you said. Thank you, Tara. I agree 100%. Thank you. I'll throw out some buzzwords, um, or I guess keywords. Uh, one is data. Uh, you know, as, as a resident, I observe what I believe to be environmental issues. Um, you know, on, on my daily walks, those would be things like litter, and, and uh, noise pollution, um, but the, the city has information, Chris, you, you mentioned 311 data about what's really plaguing our community. Uh, we need to get access to that. Um, 
a level of access that is more than than the general public has. You know, it's not just three one one data. I'm sure uh, sanitation has their own data on this. I'm sure DEP has their own data on this. We should be looking at that same data because if we're here making decisions about what problems get prioritized, it needs to be based on more than just you know what we feel like like the problems are. Uh, the second one is expertise. Uh, we're, we're all volunteers here and we want to solve the problems we're talking about, but I, I don't know that many of us have a background in environmental protection. It goes beyond the background of, of general advocacy. Um, you know, I've, I've worked in, in uh, public service most of my life, mostly in, in federal government and, you know, there, there's a lot to be said for talking to the people within our government, within city government, who are working on the problems we're trying to solve. And I know that there are lots of people who would love to come here and talk to us about, you know, about sewage problems, about where that starts and how someone, how, how a group like ours can contribute to the problem. Because I think there are lots of ways that that there are lots of ways that we can contribute to, to a problem, but only a few ways in which we are best equipped to address a problem. And I think the people who are on the front lines of those problems would, would have great advice about where we should focus our efforts. Uh, and the last one is outreach. As a resident here, I think I've been a resident in this community for, I think six years. And I, I've never seen, to me, when it comes to interacting with the community board, it's always a, you know, I always have to go out and grab them and find out what's going on. Uh, and I think, you know, I've, to my knowledge, I've never even gotten emails from the, the board at large talking about what's going on. I know there are people on our block who have self-organized uh, trash cleanup efforts on, on Sunday mornings on Flatbush. Uh, and I bet there are other block associations that are doing things like that. And I, as a resident, I don't see the, uh, the engagement between the community board and block associations and, and you know, just individual residents going, on, going and knocking on doors, telling them that, that we are working on a problem and we'd like their contribution. And I think that's important because I think a lot of the things that we're talking about and, and will talk about will rest the success or failure of those efforts will rest on our ability to engage a lot of a lot of people with their volunteer efforts instead of just the volunteer efforts of the ten people on on this call. Uh, that's everything for now. That's that's really helpful. I'll, I so what I'm hearing, Matthew, is I'm hearing data driven decisions are important. I'm hearing things like expertise and really plugging in with some of those agencies to make sure that uh, help us and we can help them figure out how to address some of these issues. And then I'm hearing outreach as well, the importance of organizing and making sure that it's not just the folks on this call, but how are we engaging with block associations to make sure that we have power and numbers to address some of these problems. So, right, and, and on the subject of expertise, I'd also add people at Medgar <clears throat> Rivers. I'm sure there, there are faculty there who can, who can, uh, who can give us some some guidance too? That's a great point. That's a and, great. Point. You know, just what I, what I would envision is something like you know, if we decide that next month's agenda is going to focus on on problem X, mm -hmm. let's find someone uh, in city government or at Medgar Evers or at Brooklyn College who uh, has a background in that and can talk to us not just about the problem in general, but about how people at our level can contribute to solutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's a great point too. Let's plug into the resources we already have in our community that the academics and professors at Med Grevers is, is one potential option. And I see Fred is, has his hand raised. Fred, please go ahead. I don't see Fred. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, first of all, let me just say that it's really exciting to hear all the, the, the ideas that have gone around the table so far. And I apologize if I've cut anybody else off. I didn't want to, you know, to interrupt the flow, but this has been great. 
um, just very briefly on some of these items. Uh, definitely, I think, you know, I, I agree in terms of the outreach piece of it. Uh, I think Matt, um, Matthew, Matt, would you prefer? Matt is fine. Thank you. Matt, uh, you know, so I think that, you know, definitely the outreach piece is something that we've been working on just in terms of a little bit of background. So we have not had a district manager in about five or six years. So we recently just hired, um, you know, leadership in the office. Uh, so that is definitely one of the things on his agenda, the things that's on my agenda as well, in terms of making sure that we're expanding the network. Um, so if you haven't gotten emails now, guess what? You're in for a treat. You're going to get more than you ever wanted. But, but no, but definitely I think that's something we've recognized. And I think that's part of the reason why we look forward to everyone who's here in terms of helping us spread the word with respect to, listen, we have this committee, we're doing these things. Um, if people have, you know, an interest or if they have specific things that they want to see done, these committees, all of our committees are the place where this work gets done. This is where we, you know, we flesh out the ideas. This is where we bring in the expertise. Uh, this is where we develop, uh, you know, this is where we develop proficiency in terms of we know how to have the conversation, we know where to go to have certain things done. Uh, I really like the idea about engaging Medgar Evers, and, I, and I, I think I'm happy to say that uh, it's ironic too, or maybe not ironic, but we just started engaging Meg Revers. They have a brand new president, uh, Dr. Ramsey, who by profession is a botanist. So she studies this. And part of what you know, her vision is for the college is to definitely make sure that they are doing programming, sharing expertise, things that are going to be able to help the community as well. So you know, I, I think there's a lot of minds thinking alike you know, in a lot of respects. So I think that's something that we're very excited about. And I think we already have the air of the college in terms of, yeah, they're looking forward to do that and they're chomping at the bit as well. Um, I, I definitely, you know, again, I, I'm hearing about, you know, organizing block associations. Again, those are some of the things we're trying to do in terms of expanding the network, finding out who the people are we should be talking to. And if you know the names of people we should be talking to or certain associations, you know, we'd more than welcome you helping us make that connection so that way we can do that. Um, you know, and, you know, I understand sometimes there's some frustration in terms of there are things that don't come from the board. Um, you know, again, I think some of it stems from the fact that the board is just, you know, the office is just really kind of getting up and running. Uh, I shouldn't even say that because they've been keeping that office afloat for, for a couple of years now. But now with the new leadership, those are the things that we're tackling. We understand that there are weaknesses in there. Uh, so we're trying to see about making sure we're, we're plugged into more places and we find these things out. I think one of the challenges is sometimes we don't know what we don't know. Uh, when it comes to composting, if we don't know who's doing that specifically, um, we don't know who to contact to make sure that we're getting those things to pass on. Um, but again, but these are the things too. Now we can give the office. That I, I have that in information, of, and I can give it to you. And I, I have no, absolutely. I've sent it, and I'll, I'll send it again. I mean, it's right out there. It, it, the composting info is is there. You know, they they've been asking our info for our information. For quite some time, and CB9 hasn't posted it. Hi, it's Teresa. Been posted, uh, it's hi, been Teresa. posted in my neighborhood. Well, hi, Teresa. So our constant contact has had composting uh, sign up. Oh, that's great because I looked and I didn't see it. For, Thank you. Okay. All right. No. No worries. And of course, anytime you have it, but I didn't see it on. You know, I looked on the website, and. Um, I actually went to some other community boards website and looked at their mm -hmm. environmental protection information, particularly and other information. Right. And we really have nothing on our website. Like we need links for like right. the composting for the for the trees for specific three one one complaints. Yes. I, I I've saved all those links and I have a document that I can forward. So if we can like get to work on this right away. I, I would really like to do that. Well, of course, that if, most if I could definitely. Just say this, if, yeah, if I could say this, definitely share the information. Now, the only thing I'll say is that one of the things I'll have to do on the office level between Khalid and, and Dante and, and Mia is one of the things is we're, we're still developing the website. One of the things we also have to understand is that we don't want to, you know, sometimes, especially with the website we have, we can't have everything on there. So sometimes things will be posted on the website. They might be stickies on the website. Otherwise, it might be things that we share uh, via our constant contact. So there's an email blast that goes on on a weekly basis. So those events that are coming in that are more timely end up being on the constant contact. Um, and if there's things that are more um, long-term that are ongoing, those things may make it onto the website, depending on if space permits. Because the thing is, if you post too many things on the website, it gets heavy. 
Um, yeah, we don't need to post too many things on the, on the website. But I, right. for example, but, I, I looked at, at CB2's website for their environmental protection page. It's just succinct, you know, like what their missions are, what they're working on, projects they're working on, and a few links like for trees, for example, you know, how to get a tree installed. I'd love to see that on a website. I don't think we really need to worry about like, you know, you go to the environmental page, we have a nice page there about projects we're working on, what we're doing, who to call if you need composting tree. It's, right. it's, it's very nice That's to it. see. It made me feel like, wow, this community is really trying to help people there. You know, they're working a lot on Teresa, their waterways, so. Teresa, if I may, no, no, and, and that's, sorry, I'm okay. sorry. I, I just want to, I want to make sure that we stay on track with the agenda and focus on the big picture vision. But I think it's a really great point. Let's see how we can further publicize composting uh, information. How can we bring composting to our community? So Teresa, can I just simply ask you to get with Khalid offline or any of the other district managers to share the information that you would like to see. And perhaps some of this information is already there and Khalid or our district managers will be able to, to, uh, to direct you to it. Would that be okay, Teresa? Sure, sure, it would be okay. But you know, I, I looked at the website, it's really, the, the CB9 website needs a lot of work. Sure. Well, yeah, that's I'm a work really, in progress, really Teresa. Have, it's a work. It's I'm a work really in progress. Have. We're currently working with DOITT. Donsley has given a number of district manager reports stating this uh, uh, from past board member meetings, and so we are aiming to have our website look a lot similar to, say, as you said, Brooklyn CB nine. Uh, I'm sorry, Brooklyn CB two, and so forth. So it's a work in progress. Just please stand by for it. But in the meantime, of course, just send us any information that you have. We're always willing to just post that and give it a social media presence. Thank you, thank you, Khalid. And I saw that, uh, Fred, I just wanna go back to you quickly and then go to Suki because Fred, I think you were mentioning, is there anything else you want to share on, on the vision aspect and some of the things that, that Matthew, that Matt and Teresa had, had raised? No, I, I just wanted to say it's great energy. Uh, these are definitely thoughts I've had uh, or I've heard from other places as well. So I, I think this really kind of speaks to the fact that, yeah, that this is really important in the, in the district, in the community. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and, you know, the only thing, I guess the only thing I would say is there's a lot here, um, but we have about seven or eight months in which to do these. So I would just say that, you know, we want to be careful about boiling the ocean, so to speak. You know, let's pick those few things that we definitely want to hit. Uh, but definitely, I think it's good for us to actually think long range, long term as well in terms of you know, there are things that we want to make sure that we develop and we address as a, as a community, as a district. Thank you. But this is all fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Suki, please, please go ahead. What we're, dis what we're talking about is our vision for the community. What is oh, the- Oh, hi. Um, what, what is the community that you would like to see and how would you like Community Board 9 to look like in terms of environmental protection? Um, so I actually wanted to specifically ask about flooding um, because I did have a few neighbors who had flooding in their basements. I live on Fenimore between Flatbush and Bedford. And those who were to Flatbush didn't get flooding, but I had at least three neighbors from like about the middle of the block to the Bedford end who did get um, like serious flooding. And uh, I heard from somebody on Midwood um, between Bedford and Rogers, the same thing that there were like a handful of people who were flooding. And um, it turns out, I, I saw an article in Brookliner that had a link to an NYC storm. And it turns out the city already knew about all the areas that were gonna have flooding. And it was exactly, they, Fenimore between um, from the middle of, of Fenimore Street between Flatbush and Bedford that was and Bedford was an area that was marked um, it looks like most of Flatbush Avenue portions of Bedford Avenue and the Rogers Avenue were all 
marked on that map. So I don't know if I'm, I apologize, I missed the discussion. I don't know if other people noticed issues with their neighbor. Um, but it, 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 it looks like the city already knows about these issues. So the question is, what are they gonna do about it so it doesn't happen again? Thank you, Suki. I think, I think that flooding is, um, sorry, you broke up. I, I think that flooding is a really important issue and that's something that we can work programming around. In terms of the vision for our community, how would you like to see the risks of, of flooding be mitigated? Um, I mean, about, you know, I, I, you know, again, I'm not, an, everyone was saying, I'm really not an expert on this issue, but I actually remember about six months ago in April, one of my neighbors, um, Dwayne, you know, because he used to be on the board, had said that there was a blocked sewer drain at Bedford Avenue. I don't know how he knew that. Uh, he said he was trying to get the city to do something and then we didn't hear anything about it. And then sure enough, there was flooding around Bedford. So like, as maybe as a community board, if we can, um, you know, write letters to find out what have they done, um, you know, the schedule is for clearing or maintaining these sewers. Like when I look at this map, which I, I can forward to you guys, how did they even know that it was going to be a problem in those areas? What, was it because of the state of the sewers? Is it like the how low or high the ground is? I'm not clear from the map. I, I can't go back from there to any kind of data source or any website. So I don't know where they got their data from but they clearly know. And so if they know, like what, what are they, uh, you know, like can, can we contact DEP and find out what they're doing about this that's, and what they're for maintenance or what, whatever, you know. That's helpful, Suki. I think that, so what I'm hearing is the importance of, in terms of the collective vision for Community Board 9, one thing that we may wanna work on together is getting in touch with our agencies to nudge them in the direction of, of helping hold them accountable to cleaning sewers and debris so that we can avoid flooding. I think that's really helpful. Uh, I'm, and I, I wanna be mindful of our time and I'm happy to spend more time thinking about our vision. I think we can get into brainstorming of programming of actual tangible things we wanna do together in the next meeting. I think it's more important to spend this meeting really talking about our vision, the meeting norms, and our roles, which we still will have to get to those. But I also want to be mindful of our time. And Martina's had her hand up for a while, and then Maxine. So Martina, please, uh, did you have a comment you want to share about your vision for our community in terms of environmental protection? Um, well, um, I just wanted to say that in addition to um, wanting to protect our green spaces and perhaps increasing them through community gardens and, and things of that sort, that I wanted to just comment on what somebody said about um, groups cleaning up uh, trash in, you know, in our neighborhoods. And I think that's wonderful. Um, and I'm also wondering um, if possibly, and I, I'd like to explore this with everybody, whether having large, plastic bins, having, having that sent out to every single resident in Crown Heights in our area, um, it will clean up the trash because oftentimes trash is because um, the trash people don't come in time and it can sit there for days and then it opens up or cats or rats get into it and then it, it flies around and it gets everywhere. And if we had it contained, I think that we would be in much better shape. And I, I'd like to refer to what they do at, at, in Park Slope in which I think they're, I don't know if it's their community board or somebody that has designated these, um, these bins for each household. And you, know, and you can see that there isn't that kind of trash on their streets. And I think it's, you know, it's really heroic for everybody to go out there and clean it up. But on the other hand, maybe there's some, 
preventative way that we could um, tackle this together. That's, that's really helpful. These are large plastic bins. Just to clarify, Martina, are these large plastic bins that you've seen on the sidewalk or are these in front of private property buildings and, and homes, houses? Um, I think they're sort of within their, their front yard area, but I think some of them are out on the curbs too. And, and um, maybe not very much. I think they might be mostly, but anyway, I think that they are a city because they're all uniform. They all look exactly the same. Okay. okay. Um, and that would really help with, with rodent issues as well. Right. Right. So the, taking a step back, the 20,000 foot view here, when we're talking about the vision for our community is cleaner streets and streets that have trash that's picked up and we don't have litter uh, on the sidewalk. So that's building off of what Suki was talking about in terms of flooding, which mm -hmm. is really more of an environmental protection, but also a trash issue as well, because if, if the catch basins are clogged with, with litter, then when there's a heavy rainstorm that can lead to, to flooding issues. So I think these are, these are connected and that's really helpful. I wanna make sure to hear from Maxine. Maxine, did you have thoughts uh, or what are your thoughts on- Yes, I do. I think it is very important that we make it clear what the vision will be. Mm -hmm. And data driven, of course, is very important. Data is easily secured. The preventive measures is what we need to concentrate on. And certainly you as a community board have the resources to follow up. For example, I talked earlier about the 18 inch rule. I, th I was thinking it would be great if on a monthly basis, uh, that 18 inch rule, that you do a tour of the neighborhood. It was said that, oh, we have to speak broadly. Well, we have to go from the ground up first. You mm -hmm. call that generalizing, but some things are fundamental, such as cleaning, the, uh, the water basins, the sewage, which is what they were called in my day. And that is to go see that in a nice way, speak to uh, um, the commercial owners and have them at a minimum clean it. They don't. Now, in terms of 311, my community, we have done that numerous times. And the response and the re uh, uh, from 311, oh, we went and we didn't see anything. Either they are blind or I don't know when they go. So my point, and I really want to get it across, is you have the resources to pull the data. And I do think it's a good idea to do those tours, but follow up and say, yes, there is a problem. Who doesn't, you know, first, the first documentation or data, it's to take a picture. And I think we did, I will say quite well on these four corners. How long? How long do you watch and walk through and see the garbage and the rats and do nothing? So we worried about climate control, no doubt. We certainly need green spaces to, to uh, uh, take in the carbon di dioxide. We need at a minimum fundamentally cleanliness. And I would love to see a part of, it might sound uh, uh, superficial and general, uh, get your data based uh, information and go to the proper agencies, city agencies, and put some preventive measures in. Yes, in terms of sanitation. It's give them a warning, it's really nice, but folks deal with money. Okay, they respond to money. And if you could put a push, say, okay, I'll give you a first warning, commercial business, homeowners. The second one, start ticketing. That's the only thing that most people, unfortunately, respond to is a dollar. So I don't think it's general, okay, and absent data driven because I've been here 40 years and seen the problem. I have a tree on this block that's been dead for about 10. And that goes to the community board and I reported it through 311 and the mm -hmm. department and the tree still sitting outside my window, standing dead. Ma so Maxine. I'll stop, but I'll just say, I'm not a board member, I'm not even a committee, but that is the thoughts of my a block association, and if you could help us use your resources and jumpstart these city agencies, it would be very appreciated. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Maxine. I just want to make sure I'm I'm hearing you well. So, what you're saying, from your perspective, the vision for your block 
and our community is really focused on cleanliness and making sure that the city agencies are doing their job. Is that right? Okay. This is something that I've heard from a lot of us tonight in terms of the city agencies. A lot of us has, have talked about getting in touch with Department of Environmental Protection, Sanitation. And that's one thing that I, I think it could be helpful for us to do is <clears throat> let's invite sanitation, environmental protection and parks as well to come in and chat with us for one meeting where we can have a question and answer period with them. You know, you we know have to, but I'm sorry, Maxine, let me just finish. I would like John to share the email Maxine. with the sanitation department. I'm sorry, Maxine. That on our own. I'm sorry, Maxine. I just want to finish this thought and then I'm happy to hear back from you. Okay. I, I think that it's, it would be helpful for us to uh, respectfully engage the city agencies. Now, sometimes from what I understand, they can be a little bit reluctant to come and speak to us because they know we, we're very enthusiastic and we're passionate about our community. But I think if there's a space there for us to engage with city agencies in a meeting, that could be helpful, particularly if it's done in a way in which we're breaking down the silos. So in other words, let's not have sanitation come and speak to us one day and then the next day environmental protection department. Let's have them both with parks, all three of them come to the same meeting and let's spend the whole meeting in a question and answer period, 20 minutes with one group, 20 minutes with the next, 20 minutes with the next. I mean, that's initial thoughts. Um, Maxine and, and others, I, I'd welcome your thoughts on that. I think that's a great idea. And what I wanted to share with you is that I have an ongoing communication and an open dialogue and result orientated uh, results from the sanitation. They did a very excellent job. I would like you, Christian, to follow up on my emails because I have not been answered as to some 311 complaints that were made. And I'd also like to know what you guys think about the monthly tours to stay abreast of what is going on fundamentally in the neighborhood. Um, Maxine, please, after this meeting, feel free to send me the emails, particularly 311 uh, messages that you have with sanitation and I'm happy to follow up. And then I, I bring your question to the whole group how does the group feel about a sort of monthly walk around the community to make sure that trash is being picked up and sewers and catch basins are cleaned? Oh, Fred, please go ahead. I see your hand is raised. After Fred, then Teresa. Yeah, uh, yeah just with respect to the 311 complaints, if I could offer this. One of the things that the district office is trying to do is be able to get a handle on, on, on all the complaints. So as opposed to sending them directly to you, if we could ask everyone to make sure that, you know, you can still see, you know, actually, you know, I think you should definitely get that so that way you can see where the progress is, but make sure you send that to the community board office in terms of they compile these things. One of the things that we're trying to get to as well is, you know what, instead of, you know, fighting one fire at a time, so garbage here, garbage here, garbage here. We can call sanitation and say, listen, there's a general issue in terms of garbage. And there needs to be a conversation on the superintendent level or whatever, whatever the, the appropriate level is with respect to that. Um, but it's always helpful, you know, and this is the one thing we're advising everyone in the community. When you do the call, because you know, the one thing is I know 311 sometimes is terrible in terms of they never respond. You get a number. But at least if we get the number from the in the board office, they have the ability to compile it, they have the ability to follow up. Uh, with respect to um the various agencies, I believe they're on the contact list. So they are invited to actually come and attend these meetings. Um, I will speak with Dante afterwards to see if we can get the commitment for them to come. So that way you can feel things, you know, they can feel things and hear it firsthand. Um, but even if that doesn't happen, Dante meets with liaisons from the various agencies on a monthly basis as well for the service cabinet meeting. So if there are any issues that need to be resolved on that level, or if there's specific complaints, he can take that back and try and get updates for that. And he can relay that back to the committee as well. Um, you know, and just in terms of, you know, that, you know, I think that, you know, while it's good that you hear the complaints, I, I don't want you to necessarily get caught up in resolving those. We have a district office staff, they'll take care of that. Um, I think it's good for you to hear them so that we can kind of figure out where the trouble spots are, what the general policy should be. You explore that. If there is a conversation with regards to policy that needs to be developed, 
this is the place. You develop that, you bring it to the board, and the board uh, will will use this leverage as, a, as, a, as an agency of the city to make sure that we're engaging on the correct levels. Um, and the other piece of that is I want to also say is that, you know, especially we're looking forward um, as we're going to have a new city council next year, we've already been engaging a lot of the local electeds. So that is definitely going to be part of the strategy where it's like, you know, what, it can't just be CB9 complaining about stuff. Uh, we have elected, they need to be accountable. So we are going to make sure that they are accountable and working with us on these issues. Uh, they may want to gap off the board, but when it comes to an elected official, sometimes we find that when you have one, especially who's working and engaged, those calls tend to get answered a lot faster. So we intend to leverage all those partnerships. I'm sorry, I just wanted to throw that out there. I'm just, thank you for the time. I think that's yeah, helpful. Um, thank you, Fred. Um, Go ahead, Teresa. Uh, I, I don't think we should mess around too much with the 311 complaints. I think we should do something bigger. There is, just so people know, there is a data map where you could specifically go to CB9's complaints. You can go to specific complaints for rats, dirty sidewalks, all this stuff. And you could see all the complaints. You, you don't need me to send you the complaints. I do know that just for one anecdotal example, I there's all these pigeons over on this building in Empire. They've been there for like years. There's so many and the population is growing and they all fly over by my house and that it's a huge hazard. There's so much feces over there. Pigeons are a big hazard. I have put in numerous 311 complaints. They get removed or they just remain open. You know, they just get solved, but the pigeons never go away. I don't want us to deal with that, but that's just an example where I'm like, okay, you know, let's not get caught up in the 311 complaints. You can find the data on the map, it's there. Make more complaints like I do. I should make more. The other thing is with the storm drains, this is a spe specific issue that I think we can work on. The, the flooding and the storm drains is with sanitation now not cleaning as often as they do and cars not moving, like everybody knows cars aren't moving as often as they do. And they're not moving on the days they're supposed to. Sanitation is not ticketing and the streets aren't being swept. We had a big problem in my area where I live, where the storm drains got clogged by these trees that drip this specific kind of leaf, right? So they drip, they, they clog the storm drains. During those storms, I went out there with my daughter with a tool and dug them up. My neighbor helped me, we dug up, we swept the street. We did all we could before the next flood, before the, the second big flood because our streets were flooding, right? It was coming way up. It wasn't draining properly. Right? We, we, we did it. We, you know, I was out there in the storm, right? With this big rod cleaning out those drains, right? This, this, with the fall coming, like fall's coming, the leaves are gonna fall. If they're not swept up, it's gonna be a lot worse if we get another big storm, a lot worse, a lot more dire flooding. And that's something that should be immediately taken care of is those cars need to be ticketed, towed, and the streets actually swept, not just go down the middle of the street because like, like I would say a third of the cars do not move on the two days where they do street sweeping. And it made my block party disgusting. I think that's a so, really good point, Teresa. And, and I've seen that as well on my block on Clarkson, the cars don't move and then the streets don't get swept. And now you end up having more litter on the storm drain. So thank you for, for raising that. Can I ask you, Teresa, to send me after this meeting a link to the 311 data map? Let me just say something. I think- I'm I sorry, I'm sorry. I just, I, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just wanna yeah. hear from Teresa. Teresa, can yeah, you- Yeah, you're all over the map here. It's, it's driving me crazy. Teresa, can you send me that 311 map after this meeting? I think you're on mute, Teresa. Teresa, you're on. Oh, you. Sorry, it's pretty easy to find with Google. Like you just put 311 map and it'll take you to the 311 page and then you click a little thing and you're you're on the map feature. And it's it's wonderful. You could- Christian, it's, it's, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll, Teresa. Yes, I'll send it I know to you. what you're talking about. It's the board stat, it's the community board stat um, program. And I will happily you know, talk you through it, Christian, and as well as the full committee as well. Uh, it's comp. It's similar to like an NYPD comp stat, but with 
boards.data.nyc, uh, you're able, as Teresa was explaining, you can see uh, three one complaints in various parts of any community district. You can look through time frames. You can search through uh, trends, sanitation, DEP, DLT. You can search by agency. You can search by address. The only thing is, of course, you can't search by specific identifying information like, you know, this person specifically entered in this 311 complaint number, but you will see the 311 complaint number or the reference number, including just the generic um, details such as sanitation or rodent infestation or such like that. So I, I will, I'll, I'll send you some information on that uh, tomorrow, Christian, and as well as the committee as well, just like a brief overview. Khalid, thanks so much. That's really appreciated. And uh, for in terms of 311 complaints, I would like to be able to see just from my own knowledge uh, where the complaints are coming from. So when you send, if you need to follow up with uh, the district office on 311 issues, please just copy me on that because I'm creating a tracker that will show for my own purposes uh, where some of these complaints are. It, you know, now that I understand that there's this board stat.data.nyc that Khalid and Teresa just mentioned, I may not use this tracker, but for the time being, as you send in uh, 311 issues that you wanna follow up with on the district office, please just copy me so I, I have knowledge of that as well. I wanna move forward because I- I, I have to say, I, I really have to say something. I, I really, really have to say something. Sure. I, I really believe, you know, I'm listening and I've been listening for quite some time and people are all over the map. I think what you need to establish is what you're going to do and what our role is as a committee because now you're into district manager role, you're into, so, so you need just to, to find out what, what we're going to do as a committee, what we're going to present to the board and what we're going to do on our own to present to the board because we're not the ones that's going to run all over the place. You know, there are people that are in place that will carry it on. You know, like uh, 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 elected officials are one thing and maybe our board does another, but. At the, at the end of the day, the entire board has to vote on a lot of different things. And when you start talking about the 311 calls, that is supposedly noted into our board. And there's a, they're supposed to be keeping, am I right or wrong, a listing of with complaint numbers. So we don't want everybody calling all over the world. I think um, I, I heard a lot of good things that people were saying earlier when they talked about working on things that they see within the community itself. They talked about garbage, flooding, this and that. So we, we want to work on something, but not everything at one time. Pat, I think that's a great point. And look, we got a lot of issues to deal with, and we have to know, be mindful of our own role as a committee. And to sure. the extent possible, I really would like us to think boldly about a vision for our community. So one thing I'm going to do after this meeting, and I'd like to review this with our committee next month, is just a very succinct vision statement using all the ideas that you talked about today. Suki talked about controlling flooding. Matthew talked about data-driven decisions. Uh, folks talked about community gardens and composting. That was Teresa. I'd like to come up with a succinct, we're not gonna be able to do everything because we have just six or seven months. We have to be realistic here in terms of how much time we have before we break in 2022. But if we can come up with a succinct vision, then I think we can go into programming. Okay, this is what we want to accomplish once we have a vision. So I'm going to put that together and I'll share that for your input and edits or feedback, however we want to do it in the next meeting. I'm, I'd like to hear from Suki and then I want to be respectful of everyone's time. And we have two, th two important matters to get to before we close out. And that's meeting norms and also roles. But before we do, uh, Suki, please go ahead. Um, hi. Uh, so I have uh, two requests in terms of um, what we can do as a board with the community. The first, it would be very helpful if um, we can put together some information sheets about 
people about what to do or not do in terms of things like trash and flooding because it's kind of hard to say to your neighbors like you have to move your car you should be cleaning up you shouldn't be like concreting over your yard you know like the all these complaints come up but nobody wants to want to yell at their neighbors all the time about these things so it would be really helpful if you know, we can put out regular information bulletins. Like these are the things like, you know, four or five simple things that you should be doing um, to help with these problems. Um, if we can present them at general meetings um, or if DEP ha or sanitation has sheets about like how to put out your trash properly, what are the rules? you know, what things you can do, what programs we have about flooding and we can pass them on to the community. Um, the second thing is I was thinking about what you were saying, Christian, about how to crystallize some of the, the various things people are talking about. And one initiative that I know that the city is trying to do is green roofs and that does kind of combine some of the things that people are asking for. Um, and I think think that eat, like for things for a new roof it has to be either a green roof or a blue roof so that may be something we want to think about how can we get out information about that how can we promote that how can we reach out to like owners of supermarkets or schools or, or libraries or other institutional buildings that might might be doing this so that's that's all i wanted it's very helpful, Suki. Thank you so much for sharing. And, and I think the informational sheets is, is a helpful idea. And I, I would think too that that's something where we wouldn't even have to reinvent the wheel. These are things that, as you said, DEP might already have, or maybe our district office already has. So thank you for, for sharing those two, that idea as well as the, the idea on green, green roofs. Um, I want to move forward to meeting norms because I think we're a community, we're a committee, and we're going to be meeting regularly once a month for the next several months. And I think it's important to uh, come up with some shared norms in terms of how we meet, especially for, let's just say for the next couple of months while we're virtual, eventually one day we may go back to in person. Uh, but what are some of the norms that we want to follow and respect as a committee when we are meeting. And, and please be brief because we're, we are running short on time. I think we should start each meeting with a short meditation about our, um, what we're all here together for. Okay. I've done, they've done that in other meetings and I really liked it. And I think it puts us all on the same page. So a short meditation, so something to effect of sharing what our purpose of meeting is that day? Yeah, well, just in general, you know, like while we're together here. That's helpful. Thank you, Teresa. What else do we have from folks on the line? Wait for people yeah, if to I, if I, finish and or stick to the um, stick to the hand raising system while we're you know Zoom based. I'm sure this works much more, maybe not much more, but at least a little more smoothly when we're in person in terms of talking over each other. We don't have the lag, but while we do have the lag, and there are so many of us, I think it's really important that we stick to a common framework of notifying people that you'd like to speak. I, I second that. I think that's helpful. Thank you, Matt. Fred? I, I just uh, took on uh, Matt's idea and I raised my hand, but uh, I, I just wanted to comment. I think that this has been a, a very good meeting in that sense, in, in terms of everyone's been respectful. Uh, and to a large extent, I think they follow these norms in terms of people who are allowed to speak. I think they waited for the recognition of the chair, which is always very helpful in terms of, you know, if he's able to guide that. And he's been very, you know, very good in terms of identifying who has something to say, who hasn't had a chance to say something. Um, you know, I'm probably one of those people who's guilty of it. You know, we don't need to speak all the time. Sometimes we, also, we just want to make sure that we get members to, to talk about it. 
we don't want to shut anybody out. We don't want anybody to, to feel somebody else will get the point eventually, but we want to give everybody, make this a space where everyone can talk. In general, the board has a code of uh, rules of conduct policy. Uh, it's a page long, page and a half long. Uh, I waive the reading of it uh, every month just because I think at the, the core of it, it just says, we just come here and we're respectful of each other and we respect the fact that, listen, we don't always agree. But I think if we're at least committed to hearing people's ideas, um, when we get to the point where we vote, we understand that at least it's after a full dialogue, we may not always agree, but at the end of the day, we're all doing this in the interest of the board. Or I should say of the district, because it's not about the board, it's about the district and, our, and the residents. I, I hear that. Thank you, Fred. And I, I agree with you. I think that it's been a respectful conversation uh, this evening, and a lot of the norms that we can put into practice are things that we've already followed today. But I, I, I also am really big on respect. It's important for all of us to respect each other. We're all neighbors. We're all in this together. We're all one family. And there will be times where we disagree with each other. But at the end of the day, we're in here together. We live in the same neighborhood and we have to take care of each other. So uh, respect, I think, is really important. Maxine, thank you for raising your hand. Please go ahead. Yes, I raised my hand previously as well. I just, I came in the meeting a little late. I was wondering, it would be nice for everyone to say um, who was a board member, who was just a resident committee member, and it'd be nice to see people. Uh, was that done at the beginning? Did everyone say I am um, on the committee because I came in a little late? To introduce yourselves in that way. I see names, I don't know if it's a resident, uh, committee member or a board member. I think that would be respectful and nice in terms of um, your norms. Thank you. Thank you, Maxine. That's really helpful. And you know what? Let's go ahead and implement that right now quickly. Uh, my name is Chris and I'm the chair of the committee. My name is Matt. Uh, I think this is a great idea. Uh, I'm, I'm, on the, uh, I'm on the committee. And uh, you know, I was I was on the housing committee last year, and in each and every meeting, Maxine, I was always unsure of whom I was talking to and what their role was. So I I think this is great, and I I think the best way to do this, I other people may know better, but just edit your name so that it says, you know, like I'm about to do now. Um, if you right click on your name. Uh, sorry, right click on your face or your name and then click rename. You can then type it in. That's helpful. Thank you, Matt. That's something that I think would be, I, I agree with you and Maxine, we should certainly notify who, who's doing what. Um, it may take some folks a little bit of time to uh, get used to that, but um, let me just call it out as I'm seeing it. So I see for just for the purposes of today, I, I'm on here, the chair. Martina is also a board member. Matt is a board member. And Teresa, I know you're a board member. Uh, are there other board members that, uh, Fred, please go ahead. Wait, yeah, wait, no, a board to, member, like a board member of CB9? I'm and, sorry. And that's what I wanted to just clarify. So just to make sure that, you know, we, you know, we identify as committee members. So the members of the committee, the respective committee, just identify yourself as a committee member. Thank you. Helpful. Uh, yes, so I'm the chair of this committee. Uh, Matt is a committee member. Teresa, I know, is a committee member. Uh, anyone else that we have on who is a committee member? I'm just a member of just this committee, not CB9 just to make that clear and for just just to tell you i had a real struggle technologically with the, i'm using my daughter's laptop i only use a phone usually and raising my, i don't even know how to raise my hand on this on this ipad of hers i don't know so it's a struggle for some people i'm not even sure how to change my name i had to have her help me so not everybody knows how to do that you're young, it's easy for you. It's hard for me. 
I'm a little bit older lady and I'm struggling. So be, be conscious of that when you're asking people to, to do things that people are having struggles with technology and they're trying, I'm really trying. So give that some thought, please. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. No, that's, that's really helpful. And I think that that's why, you know, as I mentioned, it, it might be hard for us to change our names right now in the moment, but I think that it's a great idea Matt had and building off of Maxine's idea of let's just make sure we present ourselves and, and uh, our affiliation, if you will. So it's something we can put into practice next uh, month. But while we're here, I just want to summarize some of the meeting norms. Uh, we talked about a sh starting each meeting with a short meditation on what brings us together. Why are we here today? What is the purpose of the meeting? Secondly, please, let's continue to raise our hands as we want to engage because there is a lag in this uh, virtual environment. Thirdly, respect. Even though we are going to, we're going to disagree on certain matters, let's always be respectful of each other because we're neighbors and we're all in this together. And then fourthly, let's identify who we are, particularly if we're on a committee. And I also welcome if you're uh, you know, the chair or president of your block association, I think that's helpful too. So thank you, those are, those are some great norms. And uh, I do wanna move forward to help wrap us up and just talk about roles. So uh, I'm one person on the committee, but we have several folks who are, who are on board and folks who are very talented that have a lot to offer. And uh, you know, there's a lot of things that we can get done. First thing that we have to get done though is assigning a couple of roles for folks on the committee so that we can stay on point and stay on track. And one of the things that we need is a vice chair. Uh, and the other thing that we need is someone to be a note taker for all the meetings. So uh, just so we have full understanding, the note taker, uh, and I talked about this with the district managers, the district managers would like to have the notes within 48 hours after the meeting. The meeting does not need to be, uh, the meeting notes do not need to be complicated, just simply noting who is in attendance, uh, if there were any motions, anything that we voted on, and some of the big picture items that we discussed, as well as follow-up ac action items. Uh, that's something that we want to get to district managers within uh, 48 hours after each meeting. In my role as chair, one of my responsibilities is to get the agenda to the district managers, and I talked about this with them prior to this meeting, and, and I have committed to uh, getting them an agenda one week in advance of our meeting so that all of the committee members and the public who are interested in joining these discussions are able to get the agenda well in advance. And I always welcome uh, additional points on the agenda. If there are items that you want to raise, uh, feel free to, to let me know. But that does bring us to a note taker and a vice, uh, vice committee chair. So, who would be interested in serving as a note taker uh, for the next couple of months? I'll do it, Chris. Okay. Thank you, Matt. I, re I really appreciate that. Um, I, I may not be able to, to attend every meeting, so there will need to be some 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 backup option okay who can serve as a as a backup i will i'll serve as the backup okay great so we have matt as the note taker martina is the backup and then we need a vice chair as well and there will be times where i also can't make meetings uh and uh if that's the case, then the vice chair will be in charge of facilitating. Or if there's a general body meeting and we need uh, to give a readout to the larger CB9 community, uh, if for some reason I can't make that meeting, I would ask the, the vice chair to, to brief the larger community about uh, just the top line, most important items that we discussed. So who would like to serve as vice chair?
Fred, I see you have, I'm sure a helpful comment. Please go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Cause it wasn't gonna be me as vice chair, but I was just going to uh, not to throw people under the spot, uh, not under the bus or put a people on the spot, but um, just to get to the logistics, if you're not able to be there, uh, I do see we have another board member, Ms. Moses, uh, who's also a former chair as well. Uh, Ms. Moses, would you be willing to serve as the vice chair? Um, so like, you know, if, if Christian for some reason is not able to chair the, the environmental protection or if he's asking the board, would you be able to do that? No, I'd rather really not. <laughs> he's like, I'm tired from the chair business. It's worth a shot. It, it, always worth a shot. And we still appreciate your participation, Ms. Moses. Thank you for being here. I have a question uh, perhaps for Khalid or, or for Fred. Are folks who uh, have roles already, whether it be note taker or substitute, uh, can folks be dual hatted? There's, there's not a prohibition on that. Okay. Not a there's not a prohibition. And the vice chair should be a, a committee member, is that right? Yes, would be a committee member. Uh, the chair of the actual committee, it's in our bylaws that the chair has to be a board, um, a member, an appointed member of the board. So in other words, you have to be a board member to be the chair. The vice chair can be either an appointed member of the board or it can be a resident member as well. Okay. okay. So that is, that is permitted. Again, vice chair, we're just looking for someone that can uh, on occasion fill in and facilitate a meeting or facilitate a readout to the executive committee or general public uh, for meetings that I'm unable to make. And I, I plan to make all the meetings. Of, of course, so on occasion will be a conflict, but uh, looking for a vice chair. And if I can just add one last comment, um, you know, if, if anyone's nervous about it in terms of you don't know what to do or, you, you know, the extra responsibility, uh, you know, again, I think I mentioned this earlier, I just want to reiterate, we are here to support you as well. So just as Christian is here, I am here as well to support you. We also have uh, members of the executive committee who will support you in that as well. So you don't need to feel that, you know, it's all on you, all of a sudden the spotlight is on you. It's just a matter of, you know, we're there to assist as necessary. Um, you know, if it's about sharing the role, sharing responsibilities, we can do that with you as well. It's all communication between the vice chair, the chair, and, my, and the executive committee of the, the board. So, you know. All right, I'll, like try, I'll try it. I've never been on, this is my first time on a committee, like a community board. I'll, I'll try it. I'm, I'm new to this. I'm not experienced but I'm willing to try since you seem like you need somebody. And, and I'll need some help, please. No problem, Teresa. Uh, happy to help you, happy to support you. Thank you so much for stepping up, really appreciate it. And uh, with that, I think we're, we're all set. We're all set. And, and we, I'll be there to, to walk you through it, Teresa, no, no worries at all. So, uh, I, I promise to get us out of here in one hour and a half. And I, I would like to keep that promise, not just tonight, but also for future meetings. So with that, I would like to adjourn the meeting unless uh, there are any other burning issues. Thank you. 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 But thank you again so, so much for your participation, for your ideas. In terms of my homework, I will work on this very succinct vision statement. We'll share this out next month when we meet. And then from that vision statement, you all can edit it, provide feedback in the meeting. And then uh, let's start thinking about what we wanna actually accomplish uh, in terms of programming and activities for the next six or seven months. So thank you very much for joining and have a good rest of your evening. Thank you. I did send you that 311 map link, by the way, to your email. Thank you, Teresa.
Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Christian. And I think we need to talk a little bit because there may be some of the stuff that intersects with the comedy I'm part of. So welcome. Thank you, Nicola, for joining and and happy to talk about parks uh, Mm -hmm. offline. Let's set up a time to chat and we can do it. We can do a good old fashioned phone call. We don't have to do the Zoom stuff. Yeah, I got you. Sure, absolutely. Do a throwback phone call, pre pre COVID phone call. Yes. She's sitting there. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening.